Um, the dramatic story of Donald Campbell and Bluebird still lives on in the nation's memory over 50 years after his fateful attempt to break a world water speed record. Yeah, but now Bluebird is back and Andy Kershaw has been following the resurrection every step of the way. On the morning of Wednesday, January the 4th, 1967, Donald Campbell's life came to a tragic and dramatic end here. <laughs> but the legend of Bluebird and Coniston certainly did not. In 2001, and following a four-year search, diver and engineer Bill Smith brought both man and machine up from the lake bed of Coniston and thus began the next chapter in the history of Bluebird, its full restoration and its expected triumphant homecoming to Coniston in 2019. The record-breaking exploits of Donald Campbell in the 1950s and 60s made him a national hero. Aged just 11 at the time, local lad Robin Cooper remembers the excitement generated by Campbell and Bluebird at Coniston. Well, it doesn't come any bigger, does it? It was, it was fantastic. You know, the idea of somebody coming to, to our lake to break a world water speed record, it was, it was incredible. What was Campbell like with you all? You must have been swarming down here after <laughs> school and, and pestering him. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, for the first, first week or so when Bluebird first arrived at Pier Cottage, it was fairly open and, and we were allowed in, we were allowed access. Showed myself and a couple of mates around Bluebird just pointing out all the various parts to it and uh, pointed out the planing positions on the boat and saying that uh, 200 miles an hour there's only 12 square inches of the boat touching the water. Wow. So I said, uh, what about at 300 miles an hour? And he just gave a, a rueful smile and said, we've got to find that out, old boy. No one had ever before reached 300 miles an hour on water. On his return run that morning, seconds before the crash, Campbell was clocked at 328 miles an hour. Anthony Robbie Robinson, a member of Campbell's core team, saw it all happen. Sadly, I was in the rescue boat that was first on the scene when after the crash. That must have been a terrible experience. Yeah, it, it, it was afterwards. It, when it actually happened, you didn't have time to think about that. We were sort of straight out there onto the lake where this crash scene was, and we were looking for him, you know, because we didn't even think that he was dead. Vicky Slaw is the curator of the Ruskin Museum in Coniston, which now has a specially built Bluebird wing, in which the old girl will eventually go on permanent display. What will it mean, Vicky, to you personally and to Coniston more widely, the day Bluebird makes her triumphant homecoming and takes up dignified retirement in this space? I think a huge sigh of relief and thanks. Probably flowers on Campbell's grave or something. I hope he's a, a, a approving of it all. <laughs> be a big day for the village. I mean, a big obviously, day nationally, I think. Won't well, it? I think I think it will in many It'll ways. Be a national event. Um, we all feel that that Coniston is the spiritual home of Bluebird and Donald Campbell, and uh, Donald Campbell himself always said the skipper and the ship should stay together. Before the old girl can make her triumphant homecoming, preliminary tests have to be done, and they're going to be carried out on Loch Fad on the Isle of Butte. And if you think these scale models are impressive, come with me now over to the workshop in North Shields, and we can see how the restoration has progressed. As the days tick down to Bluebird's tests on Loch Fad, Bill, as always, is being cautious about it. Oh, wow. You're saying that she's pretty much ready to go for Butte now? There's still an awful lot isn't done. We've never even tried to fit the engine cover yet. And there's closing strips go down the side to keep the water out, and we've got some setting up issues, and we've had a, a failure in the hydraulics that we can't get on to repair without taking the engine out, so we're going to piggyback another component on by swapping pipes. Have you got any particular anxieties about putting Bluebird back on the water after 51 years? If we can't achieve decent runs and, or the engine plays up or we have failures us and we end up basically coming back not having learned what we set out to learn. That's the only real thing that concerns me a bit. Would it be fair to say, Bill, that Bluebird has been more carefully put together than she was back in Campbell's day? Oh, there's no question. This is the best she's ever been. I mean, you're looking at modern day rivets, modern day sealants, modern day surface coating. Uh, oh yeah, she's never been as good as this. Are you confident? I'm happy. 
but you just never know. It's a machine, and things can fail. Now restored to a former magnificence, and the next step will be those first tests on the Isle of Butte in early August. And I'll be there for the one show for when Bluebird sings again. Right. And as promised, Andy is uh, on the Isle of Butte right now to welcome the Bluebird. How's it going, Andy? Hey, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm here, Michael. We're on the quayside in Rothsey with half the population of the Isle of Butte, so it seems, for Bluebird's first public appearance since the restoration was completed. And it was an unusual journey up here, to say the least. We drove up in convoy this morning from Bluebird HQ in North Shields and uh, got here late afternoon. And that process began, really, yesterday with the tricky business of craning Bluebird on to the back of the low loader. And, and the driver, the heroic driver, who was responsible for driving uh, Bluebird up here, a Butte man himself, uh, Duncan Martin. Duncan, an uncommon cargo. Very uncommon. And uh, yeah. you must have felt the weight of responsibility. Yeah, it was an enormous responsibility to be able to, and an honour to be able to carry it, you know, so I transport it to Butte. So uh, obviously it didn't come without any what issues, I mean, there was small issues like tra traffic coming out of headquarters this morning and going through the narrow streets was quite what? difficult, so... Yeah. And, um, and was a lot of interest as you came oh, up? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've never seen as many heads turn and cameras out, so it guard a Good lot stuff. of well, well done, Duncan. Along here are the two people chiefly responsible for what's happening this weekend. Bill Smith, the diver and engineer who in March 2001 brought the wreckage of Bluebird up from the lake bed of Coniston Water and spent the last uh, 15 years or so restoring her to her 1967 magnificence and Gina Campbell, Donald Campbell's daughter. Gina, did you ever imagine back in 2001 when Bill brought the wreckage up that you'd see this day and you'd see Bluebird in this condition again? Not in my wildest dreams, Andy. I mean, you have to give so much full credit marks to all the boys, Bill and his team, the work they have done. It has brought such a lump to my throat watching this boat come off it the It was ferry. considered the impossible restoration, oh, wasn't it? Oh, look, and to just see her in her magnificence, so beautifully done. And this little fella, Mr Whoppet. Your dad's master. Scott. Yeah, he, he was with your dad on every world record he attempt, was, wasn't he? was, he was the last one out of the boat and he brought a lump to his throat too, so he's well, happy to be here it's today. It's great to see you, Jean. I'm so glad you're here with us this weekend. And Bill, we've got to point out to the viewers that the, the first time on the water since the fatal crash in 1967, these are very preliminary tests, aren't they? And, and no one, uh, apart from Donald Campbell and his chief engineer, has ever driven her before. What are you going to be trying to establish this weekend? We are basically going to learn how to handle this machine. Nobody else knows how to do it. Right. Half a century's gone by, we've, we've never been launched, never been recovered, never been run. All those things we need to learn how to do to, to understand the performance. And I suppose one of the first things you've got to establish is that it's watertight. Well, there's no big holes in it that we can see, <laughs> so as long as it doesn't fill up, we should be all right. Very good luck, Bill. I hope it goes really well. Thank you. We're going to be here all weekend uh, filming those preliminary tests with Bluebird, Bill and Gina, and you'll be able to see the results of those in another report from us on the One Show early next week.